So welcome back guys. In this series, I am going to discuss GRE subject tests for mathematics. And like the main purpose of this test is like the questions which are being asked over there are going to be similar for many tests which you are appearing in your country, especially in Pakistan. For example, if you are appearing in any test conducted by STS for lecturership position, by FPSC, by LUMS and SMS for PhD admission, you will encounter the similar questions. Maybe you will encounter some of the questions which are exactly the same as I have encountered myself in many tests. Or the questions would be of the similar difficulty level or the questions would be at least similar. So like the length of each video that I want to try to keep is going to be between five to 10 minutes. And I will try to be like as concise as possible. And I will try to do at least five to 10 questions within each video. So that depends upon how long the question is or like when you solve yourself and you know the things, then it takes, I think, at most one minute to solve a question or two minutes. But when you are going to explain someone, it's going to take time because you are going to explain the ideas and the concepts behind that. So I'm going to start this and I'll come to know that, okay, for five questions, how much time does I take? And for 10 questions, how much time does I take? So then I can decide, okay, what to do. Okay. So this is GRE Mathematics Test, and this is the practice book by ETS, which is the organization that is conducting the GRE test, TOEFL test. So I'm going to start with very few questions, the beginning questions, and the questions would be too simple. You can see in the guidelines, it, it says that, okay, you have 170 minutes, and in, in total, you have 66 questions. The questions in the beginning are going to be very simple, but as you go ahead, the questions are going to be like a bit complicated, but not that much difficult. So let us start. They are going to tell the notation that, okay, <clears throat> our logarithms which are specified are nature logs. This is the one thing that we have to keep in our mind with base E. And these symbols are the usual symbols we know integers, rationals, reals, and complex numbers respectively. Okay, so the first question says that you have to integrate this quantity. Actually, this question is very simple, but it's a bit tricky because it involves e to the some constant times x. So this is a linear function in x. So this e is just a constant. So if you integrate, you know very well this formula, e to the ax dx is e to the ax divided by the derivative of ax, which is going to be a. So the the, the function in x punch, the, the function in power should be linear in x, then you can do this thing. So I'll do the similar stuff. So I have e to the ex, sorry, e to the ex divided by e plus c. But you can say that, you can see that, okay, e to the ex and the denominator is e to the one. So I can write this e to the ex minus one plus c. So this is my answer. So matching this with all these options, I think this is going to be option A. And this is simple integration. Just you have e to the ex. So it, it doesn't make sense how to do this. But if you have e to the e to the x, then this is not an elementary function. So you cannot do by using this trick that we have so far. The second question is again tricky, but it's very, very simple question. So I'm going to, I'm going to replace this inside quantity with x. So this becomes summation n is equal to zero to infinity x to the n over n factorial. This is the famous series. If you find if you just expand this series or find the exact term for this series, this is going to be e to the x. That's it. We know very well e to the x is 1 plus x plus x square over 2 factorial and so on. This is simply the Maclaurin series of e to the x. And this is exactly the compact form of the series. Yeah, so I have to just replace back x with whatever the value is. That is 3 log 2. So e to the 3 log 
two and applying some sort of properties of logarithm and natural and uh, exponential we can just see that okay this is e to the log two to the cube by using the power law of logarithm you can cancel out e and log and you have two to the three which is equal to eight we are done so the question seems to be tricky but it's not it's not okay question number three i'm going to i'm going to be a bit concise and i can do the landy stuff but like i want to make the things as simple as possible so r and a be the radius and area of circle respectively if r increases by 40 percent how much will area increase so you have r and you have a r a is pi r squared we know very well the formula for the area of a circle and r now becomes r plus 40% of R, that would be 1.4 R, you know very well. And now my new area in N becomes pi 1.4 R squared because this is my new radius. And now just you have to square it, this becomes 1.96 pi R squared. So now you don't need to do anything else, just one was our actual area. 0.96 is the increase. So 0.96 in percentage is going to be 96 percentage. So this is what we have done in our in our very basic classes, like how to convert decimal into percentage and fraction and vice versa. So this is 96 percent. Or what you can do, you can write the new area minus the old area divided by the old area multiplied by 100 and this is your new area this is your old area and just you simplify and you do the usual stuff you will get 96 percent but i'm not going to do this because it's too simple and if you if you think that i'm going maybe too too bit complicated then you can tell me then i can maybe i can explain in detail these other things but i i don't think so because you're grown up guys Okay, question four is just we have to find dy by dx for this function. This is the function. We have to find out dy by dx. It's a very simple question. So you know very well we can write this thing. Y to the four is equal to negative x by taking x on the side. Oh, not negative x, sorry. It's going to be 10 negative x. And uh, yeah, just differentiate. So... 4y to the 3 dy by dx, derivative of 10 is 0 and negative x, the derivative with respect to x is negative 1. So, negative 1 by 4y cube. So, our answer is a. Very simple, negative 1 by 4y cube. So, maybe the last question that I want to discuss in this video, then I'll make another video for the rest of the questions. So, I think I have to do five questions for each part because it's going to take a lot of time. So let g be a differentiable function in R. h be the function defined by this for all x, which are the following is h prime of x. So here we have to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is really crucial thing if you are going to appear in any exam with these uh, uh, derivatives and integrals. So you have a function h of x, which is some a of x, b of x, and some g of t dt. Then its derivative is evaluate g at b. So evaluate this function g at upper limit. So let me redo these things. So this is upper limit, evaluate g at upper limit. And multiplied by the derivative of the function, the upper limit function with respect to x. Minus g evaluated at lower limit, which is a of x, you can see, times the derivative of the lower limit. This is simply the fundamental theorem of calculus or the extended version of fundamental theorem of calculus, or you call maybe in some books it's second fundamental theorem of calculus. I don't remember exactly. But you have this idea, you can do the question. So h prime of x will be just I have to evaluate g at upper limit. What is the upper limit? x square. 
times the derivative of upper limit x square is going to be 2x. G evaluated at upper limit, there is no derivative of G involved. Keep that thing in your mind. Minus G evaluated at lower limit, 0. And the derivative of lower limit is 0. So 0 times G of 0, that's going to be cancelled. So our final answer is G of x squared times 2x. G of x squared times 2x. So you can see this is C, option C. But you can also see that this option is g prime of x squared times 2x. But since there is no derivative involved when you are finding the limit, but you have to find the derivative of the limit itself, not the function which is involved is an integrand. So this is the idea. So I think this is clear. And yeah, maybe these questions are asked many times when you are appearing for tests which are standardized tests, for example, FPSC, STS, LUMS, PhD admission tests, SMS PhD admission tests, you will find these questions. Okay, so see you in the next video with, with more questions. Till that, goodbye.